Okay, you guys, we are at Hobby Lobby and they look pretty busy today. It's the last day for their sale. Otherwise, we have to wait three more weeks for yarn week. So let's step out into the cold. It is 50 degrees, but there are wind gusts of up to 26 miles per hour and head on into the store.
Okay, so we finally made it home and I didn't get to spend my whole gift card, which is okay, because then I can make another trip. I mean, today's the 14th and it's only the second time this year I've left the house. It's been kind of nice because for Christmas we got Jenna her own car, not a new one, you know. Everybody's first car is a hoopty, so that's what she got. And uh, I don't have to play taxi mom anymore. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm free. I can come and go as I please. I don't have to be on anybody else's schedule but my own. And I've stayed home. So what the heck? But uh, yeah, um, I spent about half my card. I got 13, 5, and 8. Yes, 13 skeins of yarn. And... It was like four of two of the colors and five of another. So being being the last day of their sale, it was really picked over. And the biggest problem that I had was the dye lot numbers. I've already learned my lesson from this once on the dye lot numbers. I never realized how much the dye lots, <laughs> you know, how much of a difference the dye lots really make. No kitty. <gasps> you just caused an earthquake. Sorry, guys. He's on the table shaking the camera. If you're going to sit there, you can't move. Oops, there's his whiskers, which happens to be his name. So the biggest problem that I had was, other than them, like there were a lot of holes on the shelf, as you saw. Um, the dye lot numbers. I didn't realize until I was making this one project how much of a difference the dye lots really do make. Sometimes it's so close you can't even, you know, with the naked eye, you can't even see the difference. But yeah, I didn't want to take that chance. So I was having difficulty picking what I wanted because I have two projects in mind. And, you know, I didn't want to just buy yarn just for the sake of buying yarn. I wanted to buy them specifically for the, these projects. So I got three kinds, five of one, four of the other two. And... uh I bought variegated yarn. Can you believe it? But, all right, so here's the story. I'm working on this project. Uh, it's a pattern off of Lion Brand, and it says to use Vanna's Choice for the yarn. Now, I had never used Vanna's Choice before, and I'm making this sweater and I was surprised because usually in my limited clothing experience, usually you use the stitches that have flow and yarn that is a little bit flowier. And I was surprised at how stiff this yarn was. Now I'm not gonna stop, I'm gonna continue to make it in that just to see um, if I can do the pattern because what it's having me do isn't hard, but the pattern is kind of difficult to read. So it, it just, I've done a little bit of frogging. Um, it's just, it's a little bit confusing the way the pattern is written. But overall, like the stitches and things like that, it's, it's not hard. So what I did is I picked out a yarn that if I can make it through this pattern, using the Vanna's Choice, which feels very stiff to me. I was quite surprised because I haven't really experienced that with any of the Lion Brand yarns yet being stiff and, and hard to use, but it's not that it's hard to use. It's just, it's stiff. Like I'm not having splitting problems or anything like that. It's just stiff and it surprised me for a clothing item for that to have been picked. So I picked out another color um, and I picked a variegated because I thought it would make it a little bit more interesting. And it's Hobby Lobby calls it a print. They actually, it has long stretches instead of it being these little short chunks of the, the variegated. So, but this is the color that I picked got greens and yellows in it and some like creamy colors to um, 
redo this sweater if I can make the pattern work out. Do you see that cat? He is so bad. He knows he's not allowed to be in my workspace because I don't like cat hair in my work while I'm working with it. He knows better. That is Whiskers. He is the demon cat. At least to me, because he's mean to me. And I don't even know why he's in here with me. He loves his mommy, Jenna, though. He's some, he's nice to her, but he's not so nice to me. So, that's what this is for. So, I got five of these. And it is called Cobblestone Ivy. And it's color number 825. It is a four worsted weight. 100% acrylic, it is machine washable and dryable, and it calls for a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. And this yarn is about the same thickness as the uh, Banish Choice, but it's way softer to the feel. So, kitty. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's for the sweater. Then I was searching on, I believe it was yarn.com, and he's so bad. <laughs> I was searching on yarn.com, and I was just kind of looking at the patterns and their yarn, and I came across this cowl that I thought was super, super, super pretty, and I zoom in on the picture, and it's a knit pattern. And I'm like, I could probably recreate that in a crochet pattern. So if you were to buy that pattern and the yarn, they call it a kit, um, you get two skeins of yarn and the pattern, and it was $60. I was like, whose chain are you trying to pull? $60 for two skeins of yarn. And it wasn't anything special. It was just acrylic yarn. And in the written pattern, I'm like, not happening. So I set out on a mission and I did come up with a way to duplicate that or replicate that with a crochet pattern. So I got two different um, yarns because you use two yarns and it's, it's a mosaic pattern. And you'll see it in a future video. But this would be like the main color and it's got the, uh, what would you call that? It's got the gold metallic running through it. Give it a little jazz, spice it up a little bit. And it is uh, just called ivory with the gold metallic. And it is also a number four worsted weights, 97% acrylic, 3% metallic polyester, and it calls for a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. And then the secondary color, which is supposed to be a variegated. And I have one here that I really, really like, but Jenna said she didn't like it too much because when I was practicing this pattern, it came out really good, but I didn't have enough of the lighter color to go with the variegated color to actually do the whole thing. Because at first I did it flat and then I said, all right, let me see if I can do this in the round. And I figured it out. So, but this will be the other color. And it is called High Sierra Stripe, color number 560. And it is also a four worsted weight. And uh, calls for a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. But it has some pretty browns and blues and some creams in it and it's just really nice. So I got four of these and four of these. Now it won't take four of each. It won't even take one of each to make the cowl. But I liked it and I liked the pattern. So I was going to do something else with it as well as the cowl using the same mosaic pattern. So my, my big buy, my three types of yarn. They have some really pretty stuff, but the dye lots. So I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Um, next time, it'll be another three weeks before it goes on sale again. 
and I still have half my gift card left. So next time I think, if I can remember, one of you guys should remind me, like just shoot me an email or leave a message on the video or whatever and say, hey, it's yarn week at Hobby Lobby and let me know. So, but they had some really pretty, these rustic ones. Oh, it's just gorgeous. And then some yarn ID. Oh, they, they were so pretty as well. But I wanted to, really, I wanted to have something in mind to make with it so that I'm not just buying yarn because I have quite a bit of yarn that I just like, okay, let me get a cut this color and this color and this color. And none of them really go together now. I've like pulled from it a lot and I'd have to purchase some more and I missed Premier's sale when they had it 20% off for that yarn. But I'll be watching when it goes on sale again, I'll probably get some more of that. So just so that I have something that goes with the different colors that I have so that I can whip something up with them. But the coolest part about today's trip to Hobby Lobby was as I'm in the, the yarn aisle and trying to stay out of people's way and trying not to hear some of the F-bombs that were being dropped by these this group of young kids. And I'm in the aisle and I'm looking at the yarn ID. Um, yeah, the line yarn ID. I'm looking at those and this this woman approaches me and she says, do you know what the best yarn is for a baby blanket? And I was like, are you following a certain pattern? So she handed me her pattern and I scanned over it real quick and it said she needed a DK yarn and she didn't know what a DK yarn was. So I took her around to the next aisle and showed her where the DK was, showed her how to read the label that, you know, if it says it's a number three weight, that it is DK. And she was thrilled to death. But that was the best part about the whole trip is that I was actually able to help somebody out with something. And, yeah. So then I just went on to check out. And and so I just headed home and had some lunch. And, and here we are. So my big share. Sorry, it's not anything super exciting. But they are some quite lovely colors. I mean, is it just me or does it seem like the stores are making their yarn sections smaller? The Michaels that's closest to us, their yarn section's very small. And it seems to me that Hobby Lobby lost a whole double-sided aisle. I mean, I don't know. But I just feel like this just keeps getting condensed and condensed and condensed and there's not that much to pick from. I mean, what they have is quite lovely, most of it. Okay, you guys, thanks for coming shopping with me and putting up with my little itty bitty haul here. Um, we're going to go get some work done. And you're going to check out this video right up here.